So even during difficult times, times that we're not happy with, times that aren't fair, we still get a choice on how we deal with them, turn it into an opportunity and handle it as best we can. Welcome to At The Heart Of It. I'm Nancy Brown, CEO of the American Heart Association. Welcome to At the Heart of It, where we are telling the stories of remarkable people. Pull up a chair and get ready to hear intimate conversations about how our guests are finding purpose, unleashing innovation, and maintaining well being along the way. Listen to a softer side that you may not have heard before. We're all on this journey, so let's explore and learn together. This week, I'm thrilled to welcome a heart warrior, J.T. Laybourne. I recently learned about J.T.'s story and his passion to spread joy to others. I thought to myself, what a tremendous example of resiliency and gratitude. I'm really excited for you to learn more about J.T. Here's an inside look at how he found his purpose and manages his well-being. Going viral for change. This TikTok star isn't just making people laugh or doing the latest dance trend. No, he's encouraging thousands to get serious about heart health. Meet JT Laybourne. His rise to social media fame started with golfing trick shots and evolved into spreading positivity and sharing his story. JT is a husband, father, and heart disease survivor. Born with a congenital heart defect, JT had his first open heart surgery at four years old and his second just last year at the age of 35. Since that time, JT is using his platform on TikTok to share his journey with his now 1.5 million followers. Devoting his platform to promote awareness of the American Heart Association, JT and his wife teamed up with two other couples to raise money for this organization. What you're going to see is me dancing for American Heart Association. Their goal of raising $25,000 was shattered by bringing in over $300,000. But it doesn't stop there. JT also teamed up with celebrities like Andy Grammer, Wayne Brady, and AJ McLean from the Backstreet Boys on National Wear Red Day for a live fundraising event. Together, JT helped raise over $400,000 in just one weekend and hopes to reach $1 million soon. JT's story of hope and is one you can't miss. JT, welcome. I'm so happy to have you join me today. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's incredible to have you here and to hear your story. And we're going to get into that in just a minute. But let's lighten it up for a second um, and have a little fun. Let's play my signature game, This or That. Are you ready? I'm ready. All right. Working style, early morning or late night? Uh, early morning. Multitasker or one thing at a time? Uh, one thing at a time. For exercise, golfing or running? <laughs> Hands down golfing. I knew that. Food. <laughs> Food, steak, fish, or tofu? Man, steak all day. Okay, animal lover, dog person or cat person? Dogs. All right, me too. And here's a bonus question, wine. Are you going with red or white? You got to say red, right? I mean, red's, red's our color. Red so. is the color. Absolutely. <laughs> it is the color. That was fun. So let's get to the heart of it. You know, JT, your impact is both mind-blowing and heartwarming and very emotional, I know, for you. You had major heart surgery not long ago. Tell us how you're doing. How's your overall health? What are you thinking? What's on your mind? Man, I am doing very well. Um which is great to be able to say that. Uh, I had my second open heart surgery in May um, after my six month checkup. The um, doctor was extremely pleased with where everything was at and said, come back in a year, which is what 
all of us heart warriors want to hear. So it's, it's good. A year is always a good message uh, to hear from a doctor. You've been through so much, and clearly, I can see it in your eyes, you know, it's, it's very raw, and it, it, it still is deep within you. Yet you have devoted your life to giving light to other people. How do you stay so positive? Um, because of, uh, because of my heart, um, I've grown up with my heart issue and it's been an internal struggle because I've always been one that when someone says I can't do something, I'm going to prove them wrong. This is one of those things that uh, I wasn't able to prove anybody wrong when it came to the limitations I had growing up. It weighed heavy on me. And somewhere along the way, I just started to develop this attitude, this mindset that things could always be worse. And that is something that I've just lived by and that I'm grateful to be alive. But it could always be worse. So I've always found my heart is full when I make other people happy and when I bring joy to other people, it, it's, it's my medicine. I love that. You know, we heard in the video promo that you had your first surgery when you were only four years old after being born with a congenital heart defect. Do you remember that at all? Do you remember what it was like or what your family did to take care of you after that? The only memories I have from that is because we had a home video of me in the hospital walking down the hall with blue lips, uh, you know, getting some exercise after heart surgery, and then of me coming home, showing up to my grandma and grandpa's house. And of course, there my grandpa is on the steps of the front door. And I walk up and pull my uh, tank top up and show them what I called was a Rambo scar. Um, that's kind of how it was told to me at four years old when I looked down and saw this big, huge incision in my chest. Um, that's how I made it cool. And those are the only memories I have other than stories that family members have told me. But uh, it's been really crazy to go through what I went through back at age four now at age, you know, I was 35 back then. And it's just unbelievable ride. Yeah, the flood of probably all the memories, especially of growing up. Um, you mentioned a little bit about some of the limitations you had when you were growing up. Um, how did that affect you as a young adult? It affected me in the time, not as much as I thought. Like I said, I kind of, I always tried to pretend that I was good and I was okay. Um, but as the years went on, I started to realize how how kind of bitter I was with not being able to play football with my friends or play basketball or do some of these activities that my friends got to do. And I was just told that I wasn't allowed to. Um, getting a little bit older and having kids of my own, it's amazing how full circle it is. And uh, I am blessed for the life that I was given. And I wouldn't change a single thing about it. I love that. And you, even at the time, I know you took up golf as a sport and you became quite an avid golfer. Tell us about that. How did you find your, how did you find the golf club in your hand? Well, uh, I was told by my doctors that really there's two sports that are okay for you to play. The first one being baseball, because it doesn't involve a lot of uh, long distance running, high endurance running. And the other one was golf my whole family plays golf. So those were the two sports that I uh, took up. Um, I quickly learned in junior high that baseball wasn't my calling. So I, sp I started to spend more time focusing on golf and it uh, truly is a huge passion of mine. And it's really neat to sit here on this with you, Nancy, and think that I was put in golf because of my heart because it was one of the few things that I was allowed to do. And golf 
gave me an opportunity to have a trick shot that put me on a social media platform. And that's really uh, amazing. And you know, for so many people, people dream about becoming a social media influencer and here you are. And I have to say, it is the honor of my life to talk to you. Um, and I am so anxious to dig into how you found TikTok as the platform that fit what the message you were trying to get across and how on earth did you come to accumulate so many faithful and loyal followers? Being that I had a trick shot on Instagram go viral, um, I was given an opportunity to be an influencer in the golf world. But I always did this thing, I called it car karaoke, whatever you wanna call it. It's, we all sit in a car and we sing when our favorite song comes on, but yet when we go up to a stoplight, we all stop, even though the car next to us was probably doing the same thing as they drove up to the same stoplight. But it was this guilty pleasure that we all do, but we're somehow afraid to share with people. So I just started to post videos on Instagram. Um, I, I got my fair share of uh, trolls or whatever you want to call them. Um, and so it kind of started to fall off a little bit. I found myself not doing it as much, even though I really loved it. It made me feel good. It was part of my you know mental health. It was part of just what made me happy? Um, somebody told me about TikTok, so I just downloaded the app. And what I was going to do was just use it to create videos to go and post on Instagram. I quickly learned that there were a lot of people on TikTok, a lot of silly people just like me, just that enjoyed lip syncing and music and being silly and goofy. My life was forever changed after that. You know, I have to say, I was so honored to participate silently and watch the Wear Red Day fundraiser you did for the American Heart Association. And it's so important for our viewers to realize you have raised already $700,000 from your followers, which is an incredible feat. And I promise you, we will work really hard to help people not suffer from heart disease uh, because of these resources. But I was there watching this uh, fun, event with at any time 20,000 people watching you and your what beautiful wife and your friends talk about the importance of health and well-being. I mean, that's a real obligation that you have to your viewers and your followers as well. And I think that's why you got into talking about health and well-being and resilience. Tell us how you made the switch from golf shots to the message you have today. One of my big messages and I've got it on a, a t-shirt is be you, do you, love you. Um, we live in a world that is far ingrained in social media and it's become very easy for others to put people down. And I have been fortunate enough by my mother to be very proud of who I am and be okay with who you are. And so that's just been my message from the beginning is, is own who you are, be proud of it. And I've always said that I'm here to spread love and positivity. I'm here to uplift people. Well, when you get uh, the message, the news that you're about to go in for your second open heart surgery, it was a struggle. I didn't know really how I was going to handle this, but then it's like, this is your opportunity. You you get to practice what you preach. And I've always said for every obstacle, there's an opportunity. Um, so here was mine to embark on something really scary, but to be able to do it and be okay that I was afraid. but I was honored to be given a platform with as many followers as I have. And I wanted to take that opportunity to take them on the ride with me. I am forever grateful uh, because without this community that has been established on TikTok, I don't know if I would have been able to go through with it um, because as some know, this was during the middle of a pandemic and I was told that my wife had to just pull up to the front doors of the hospital and drop me off and I would be in there by myself. 
that was scary. But this overwhelming amount of love and support that this community was pouring in, I just, I had a sense of comfort and they helped me get through a really challenging time in my life um, that I am very grateful for. And they helped your wife when you were in the hospital. I loved hearing how she continued your tradition with your followers um, to talk about her journey as well. So it truly is a family affair. Are you a different person when you're not on TikTok? What's a typical day like for you? Do you ever like get up and say, I don't feel like going to be this person on TikTok today? Yes and no. Uh, of course, I am not always this smiling, happy, and positive. Um, and I've never claimed to be. I choose to show this side of me on social media because I think it's important. Uh, I've had the opportunity to receive some really heartfelt, touching letters from people that were going through a very difficult time and came across a silly video of me doing whatever and they say thank you because without you i don't know that i'm still here and those letters will always be ingrained in me and i will forever make this kind of content because even though i'm not always happy even though i have bad days i don't want to have someone going through a dark time come across one of those videos uh so i made a commitment that this my page will be about love and positivity and happiness. Um, but this is me. <laughs> yeah, I think it is so great. And it was just clear um, watching you that evening and your friends, you know, the impact personally that you are having on people's lives is incredible. Is there something that most people don't know about you? Um, maybe more so they know now, but a lot of people still don't know the struggle that I had growing up internally mentally feeling different like i couldn't be a part of things that i wanted to be a part of i just kind of stuffed it down in and just kept going getting to be an adult and still dealing with the same things it's been eye-opening of how much it weighed on me as a child and i truly hope if we can maybe inspire a couple kids that might be dealing with some of those same feelings, this is all worth it. That, that is a great uh, perspective. And you talked about kids. You have three children of your own. It's very clear that your family helped you become such a well-grounded, optimistic person. What advice do you give your kids or what would you give them if they were facing a tough moment in their life? That we always have a choice. Um, in a world full of things out of our control, our thoughts, our feelings are something that we always have a choice about. And so even during difficult times, times that we're not happy with, times that uh, aren't fair, we still get a choice on how we deal with them we can be salty and bitter and mad at the world or mad at a situation or a circumstance, or we can choose to take an obstacle, turn it into an opportunity and handle it as best we can. Yeah. When you think about life-changing moments, and the power of a positive attitude in life-changing moments. We talked earlier about the fact that you worked in golf. You know, you had a passion for golf ever since you were a young person. I love golf too, so I, I get that. But you wanted to give that up in a way to make a difference in the world. That must have been a major decision for you and your wife. Tell us a little bit about that. You know, what were the discussions you were having and how did you get to the point of saying, this is what we're going to do? It starts back when I was in sales originally. Uh, I was always good at it, but it was never anything that I enjoyed doing that much. Um, I left a decent paying sales job to start out in the golf industry and it was a huge pay cut. But my wife and I made a decision one day that my happiness was more important than a dollar amount. 
And my grandfather passed away a few years ago of cancer. I had the opportunity to spend some time with him in his last days. And he was my hero. He's, he's my, he's that kind of a guy that you live your life trying to, um, follow in his footsteps. He said to me the day before he passed away that as I was obviously heartbroken that what he was going through, he said that it's okay. Um, I don't have any regrets. I've lived my life to the fullest. And that statement has how I've lived my life ever since that I want to be able to tell my kids that my grandkids that, uh, and so that's where it was just, I knew I had to get into the golf industry. It was something that I'd always thought about and wanted to do. Um, I didn't realize that my true passion, what I thought was golf is really just making people happy and bringing joy to human beings. And I was really good at doing that in the golf world, but now being given this opportunity of a platform we had almost the exact same conversation, my wife and I, that this is what <laughs> this is my purpose. Um, I always ask myself growing up, why me? Why my heart? And up until about three months ago, Nancy, I never had an answer. But I kind of feel like I know why now. And I won't be able to live up to my grandfather's statement, if I don't go and try to pursue this full time, and it is scary. I've got three beautiful kids and a wife that depend on me, and it's never easy leaving a secure job, but uh, I'm ready, and I want to go pursue this. And if I fail at it, phenomenal. We tried, and we go from there, but um, well, I'm excited. You're not going to fail at anything. I can tell you that because I can hear it in your voice. The why my heart is now why my heart, you know, and you're sharing your heart with so many people. And I can tell you, you know, in my world, I spend a lot of time with parents who are, have children who are born with a congenital heart defect and the hope and the happiness and the inspiration you will bring to those families is going to change so many lives and we are so grateful to you for that. So before we go, JT, is there anything you want to share with us? One last inspirational word. I feel so inspired having talked with you today and I've learned so much um, from you about the importance of perspective and the importance of the power of happiness. Any last thoughts? I didn't ever understand how uh, a healthy mind worked with a healthy heart, but I do now. And if I can leave anybody with anything, it would be just how important it is to take care of ourselves, to look out for our loved ones, because so much of heart related issues that result in a loved one not being able to lay down next to their significant other anymore or a son or daughter not having a parent around anymore. So many of these issues can be taken care of by just going and getting checked up. Um, I was guilty for seven years of putting this stuff off and it wasn't until my wife forced me to go to the doctor again that I realized that I probably didn't make it to the next year it's time we take this stuff serious. I'll do my part and I hope everyone else does theirs. Well said, JT Laybourne. Thank you for sharing your incredible journey with us. We are so honored and we are so inspired and we look forward to seeing what's next. Thanks thank, so much. Thank I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you.
I'm still in awe of his fierce spirit and his uncanny ability to live every day like there's no tomorrow. We can all take a page from JT's playbook. One of the biggest things I took away was the fact that here is a person for his entire life, he's had adversity and he had a choice to make. He could have been negative and bitter or he could be powerful and positive. And the fact that he has dedicated his life at such a young age to live every day to help other people, I think is a wonderful reminder of the power of kindness, the power of authenticity, and the power of each one of our voices in impacting the lives of others. I'm Nancy Brown. Thank you for joining in. On the next At the Heart of It with Nancy Brown as Chief Health and Medical Correspondent for ABC News. Dr. Jen Ashton joins CEO Nancy Brown for a life-changing conversation. Well, when will we be back to normal? You don't live life in reverse, right? Hear her advice on adjusting to our new normal. Plus, find out how she encouraged thousands after the death of her ex-husband. See a side of Dr. Ashton you may not have known before. Next, at the heart of it.